Hi, it's Vex. And time to be toxic. That's right. Toxic with tox real, the corrosive. Not toxic like be a toxic content creator. No, no, no. We are good content creators here. We are not toxic. Now this slug is toxic. Let's read tox real, the corrosive. Five black blacks with seven mana value commander. Legendary creature, slug horror. At the beginning of each end step, put slime counter on each creature you don't control. So each end step, every opponent's end step and your end step. Creatures you don't control get minus one, minus one for each slime counter on them. Wow. Okay. So I know it's got four lines of text, but let's just take the two lines of text, pretend the other two lines don't exist like that, and talk about this. At the end of your first turn, your turn, you cast Tox Real, you put slime counter on every, every, you know, your opponent's creatures, they all get minus one, minus one. By the time it rolls down back to you, Creatures would have up to four slime counters on them. Minus four, minus four. Tox Real is essentially a plague win on a creature that will constantly kill your opponent's creatures. Anytime they play a creature, at the end of the turn, that creature gets a slime counter, minus one, minus one. It will eventually, you know, have disintegrate. I guess that's what you want to do with the slug spinning out toxic. Disintegrate to nothingness. Now, there's two more lines of text. Let's actually read those two lines of text for you here. Whenever a creature you don't control with a slime counter on it dies, create a 1-1 one, one black slug creature token. So if it's been slimed uh, and it dies, you can create a little slug token here. Let's find this little cute slug token right there. A little 1-1 one, one slug. It looks like a giant slug, but it's only a 1-1 one, one. there. And then you have a fourth line, which I can't believe it even has room for that. Blue, black, sacrifice a slug, draw a card. And Toxel is a 7-7. Seven, seven. It's a big creature. So... With these four lines of text, you have a one-sided plague win. You have a way to make creatures when your opponent's creatures dies with slime counters on them. And then you can draw cards. Now, this is a Demir, a blue-black uh, color identity commander because of that tiny ability there. I, I think it'd be better served as a mono-black commander because it's very powerful. It, you know, Essentially, if Toxtrol is out on the battlefield, your opponents can't really play creatures because they'll just die within one or two turn cycles. Maybe you play a big Aldrazi, it'll survive for three turn cycles, maybe, if you're lucky. With that in mind, definitely have that rule zero conversation, say, hey, I'm playing Tox Real, are you okay with that? Some play groups might be like, come on, man, let me play some creatures. Or some play groups like, bring it on, bring on the spice, let's play, you know? So we have a deck here, bam, right there, don't forget your tokens. This deck I have created has lots of tokens, actually tokens of every color, the slug for Tox Real. I was lucky to actually pull one from a pack. Some white tokens, blue tokens, black, red, green, all the colors, even uh, uh, Orzov token, some color copy tokens, treasures, so lots of tokens. Okay, so when your opponents play against Toxrill, if I was playing against Toxrill, the first thing I want to do is know that Toxrill costs seven and hold up removal for that turn that Toxrill comes down. Now, me as a smart deck builder knows that my opponent wants to kill Toxrill right away. So the first thing I'm going to show you usually. Usually I show you synergy cards, but first thing I want to show you is protection. Because Toxor will be a target uh, for creature removal, we have some protection spells right here. Uh, I do not advise playing Toxor with uh, seven mana and then just being like, okay, Toxor won't die. Of course Toxor will die. Your opponents will plan for this because you know they want to keep their creatures on board. They might sandbag some creatures knowing that Toxor comes down. So what you want to do is Play Tox Real with you know one or two mana up, or if you play it on seven, have a card like Fierce Guardianship to protect Tox Real. Right? You play Tox Real, somebody's gonna swords it, you fierce guardianship, it's like no, uh, we'll keep it alive. Now it doesn't this doesn't counter like a Raven's Chupacabra or something like that, but you know it is what it is. Uh, then you gotta pay nine for Tox Real. Okay? You have other other protection spells like Lazar Tap Plating requires two, so you gotta wait till you have extra two mana. Right there, you, your opponents can gain hexproof. So if they try to exile Tox Real, you can give it hexproof. Um, if they just try a regular destroy, we have Malakir Rebirth right here. You know, choose target creature, you lose two life. Until end of turn, that creature gains when this creature dies. Return to the battlefield tapped under its own control. So if they try to kill Tox Real, you just, you know, Malakir Rebirth in response to the kill spell. Tox Real will come back tap. It's fine, you lose two life. And then you can, uh, you know, ooze everything. You have Undying Evil and Feign Death, essentially, you know, get the creature back if they die. So it's very important because you know you're a target with Toxerill to keep it alive because, you know, you want to get your game plan on. 
you can use these for other purposes, protecting your other creatures, but they're here mainly for to protect Toxeril. And then you have your Lightning Greaves and Swift of Boost to protect it for more, more turns to come. So we have a bunch of protection spells. Then we have our Command Tower, knowing that, hey, Toxeril dies, we could you know, sacrifice our Command Tower, bring it back, cast it for 7, because it costs you know, 7, 9, 11. So Toxeril is very expensive as the game goes on. So that's, that's the protection suite I have to protect our commander. With that out of the way, let's just talk about the rest of the deck. Now the rest of the deck is kind of like supports Toxedril's theme. We have cards that do some polymorphing, essentially change the power and toughness of uh, your opponent's creatures. So you can do instant play grin if you need to. Mass diminish right here until your next turn. Creatures target player controls have base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. So what happens is you can do Toxedril's trigger on the stack. Um, actually it's a sorcery. Next one's an instant. But essentially, as long as they have a slime counter on it, you give it 1-1, one, one, it automatically dies. Uh, match and diminish. What I meant is Polymorphous Jest is the instant. It's a uh, 1 blue blue. Until the end of turn, each creature target player controls loses all abilities and becomes a blue frog with base power toughness 1-1. One, one. So essentially, you can have Toxreal trigger resolve in your end step, play Polymorphous Jest on a um, player, and just board wipe them. So... This has mass diminish as flashback, so you can shrink things, so it's pretty neat there. We have Sledge Monster, which is brand new in uh, Midnight Hunt. No, not super brand new, but brand new enough. Not in Val, like uh, Toxreal. Is whenever, and this is the cool part. It's also a horror, which I don't know why it didn't have a slime horror. But when Sledge Monster enters the battlefield or attacks, put a slime counter up to one other target creature, so you can accelerate the slimeliness with Toxreal. And non-horror creatures with slime counters on them, Lose all abilities and have base power and toughness 2-2. So dies faster with Toxreal. Of course I had to add it in because it, it does slime counters. Then you have some creature donating cards. So because of the third ability, when the um, creature you don't control dies, it makes a slug. So we want to donate some creatures to the opponent. So when they die, you make some slugs and then you sacrifice slugs, draw a card, value. Of course, right? Clackbridge Droll makes three little goat tokens under opponent's control. That's pretty neat. And they have Haunted Phantasm right there. Unblockable, which is sweet. Makes five little red goblins under their opponent's control. Then Slaughter Specialist. You know, it's a new card from a Midnight Hunt. So I, I like to include new cards in my decks because it's cool to try things out. You know, I, you know, it, it, it gets kind of old trying all the old cards over and over again. Sometimes you want to try new cards. I, I know old cards like, you know, this card, Pongify, is a very good stable. So... Until they made a similar close one, I'll, I'll keep using old cards, but sometimes it is cool to try new cards. But Slaughter Specialist, one black. When it ETBs, each opponent creates a 1 1 human, one human creature token, so more fodder for Toxreal. There's other cards in the deck that actually have on death triggers, so it's not just Toxreal that this benefits, it benefits other cards too. For instance, Slaughter Specialist has its own death trigger right here. Whenever a creature opponent control dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Slaughter Specialist. So it's a Two mana value, three three. You know, creates little tokens on every player's uh, battlefield, but it also has on death trigger, so that's a cool thing. Dowsing dagger here creates little two O2 plants. Uh, and then it's um, got transform, so it helps us transform to Lotus Veil. It's like a little uh, add three mana, so it helps us ramp into our Tox Reel. Then we have some cloning effects because you know sometimes you want a double slime uh, or you know have double creatures. The clones here are Spark Double, which allows you to copy a legendary creature because it loses legendary. Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, same thing. So you have you know up to three Tox Reels on the battlefield, which is really cool because the third ability, create those black slime creature tokens, is very important to the deck. It's very good. So and it accelerates your slime generation. Glass Pool Mimic, you know you you can't copy Tox Reel unless you copy the Sakashima copy of the Tox Reel, which has the legend rule doesn't apply, but it's a modal double face card, so it's very good in the deck. Now, going on to the what we're calling the death triggers here, which I was talking about earlier, we have our blood artists. So, of course, our aristocrat style death triggers. I love these cards. Um, I I always wish they print more, but they did print a, a new one, which we'll get to the meat, meat, meat hook massacre. But love these cards. When things die, you just drain the opponent. This is drain target player. This is Zulfo Cutthroat is the better one. Drain all opponents. More death triggers here. Bastion of Remembrance. This is from Ikoria. So brand new one. It's really cool. And makes a dude for you to sack or kill. Remember these death triggers trigger differently 
Blood Artist triggers on any creature. This is Zulpa Cutter is on, on your creature. And then Bastion Remembrance on your creature. So I know, I, I wish they had all, all uniform abilities so they all trigger like alike, but they don't. So we just gotta deal with it. Another thing that did triggers differently, but new, sir, new um, from Throne of Aldrain, Sir Conrad the Grim, right there. And it deals damage. It doesn't actually drain, but it deals damage. And, but it lets you mill. So it's pretty neat there. This is what I was talking about earlier, Meat Hook Massacre. So I think Wizards knows people love the aristocrat style, drain one, gain one, like slow bleed. So they keep on making these cool cards. And I really like the Meat Hook Massacre because it is a board wipe that you know leaves uh, a little drain effect in there. And this is also different than these guys too because when a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. So it's like half of that drain. But when a creature um, an opponent control dies, you gain one life. So it's a little... <laughs> Again, more different templating. So you have five different things that kind of do like damage, but they uh, do it slightly differently. And you know what? Let's add a sixth thing. Massacre Worm. Why not? ETBs, creatures your opponent control, minus two, minus two. And then when a creature and opponent control dies, player loses two life. Another different thing. So those are the little drain triggers here. We could drain via our slug sacrifice or slime, you know, slime deaths. So it's cool, Toxic lets us double dip by killing our opponent's creatures and giving us a creature to also kill itself with a sack outlet right there. We have a, another cool death trigger card. I, I usually don't include black market uh, because it's very clunky because it costs five mana and then when a creature dies, put a charge counter black market. At the beginning of your uh, pre-combat main phase, add black for each charge counter. So you play five, you wait for things to die. If they don't die, you don't get mana. But the reason I have Black Market is we have a lot of things dying and Toxtrill does cost 7 mana. So we need to ramp a little bit with Toxtrill, with um, our Death Triggers, just to try to get Toxtrill out again. Because, you know, again, big target. Revel Riches, another weird Death Trigger, makes treasures. My favorite Death Trigger, Dictate of Erebos, super salty because, you know, when your creature dies, their creature dies. So it's great. And then... What better way when creatures die is to draw cards. Species Specialist. So this is really flexible here. It's two black black. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. So you, you know you could choose Slug, for instance. Uh, and then when a creature of a chosen type dies, you may draw a card. So if you sacrifice a Slug to Toxic ability, you draw a card for Toxic and draw a card for Species Specialist. But the cool part is about the flexibility, you can name human, right? Because you have other humans like this guy right here, Morbid Opportunist. You can name Slug, you can name whatever. So this is, adds a lot of flexibility to the deck, which I really like, and gives you card draw. And then we have a new card from Midnight Hunt, Morbid Ar Opportunist. When one or more other creatures die, draw a card. Not just your creatures, it's any, anybody's creatures dies, and it triggers uh, once each turn, but, but it can trigger your turn and any opponent's turn. So it's really, really good. And if you know it, Species Specialist also says whenever a creature of the chosen type dies, not your creature. So if your opponent has you know a bunch of tokens, a bunch of elves, you can name elf. And then when the elf dies, when the elf dies to tox you can draw a bunch of cards. So very that's the extra flexibility of species specialist. Then we have ogre slumlord. So another non-token creature dies. Anybody's token, non-token though, make some rat tokens. And rats have death touch. Again, you can name species specialist name rat if you have ogre slumlord out. This makes additional creatures for you to uh, sacrifice. We do have some sacrifice outlets here. And then another cool death trigger. This is really, really cool for Midnight Hunt. Gissa, Glorious Resurrector. So when a creature and opponent controls would die, eggs on stead. So it does, you don't get a death trigger. They do come back, and if you attack with them or sacrifice in some way, you do get a death trigger. So Gissa is a cool way to just you know steal your opponent's creatures. Right there. Another cool way is Sealdred Whispering One. Well, not uh, steal your opponent's creature. It um, makes them sacrifice creature. Of course, we're playing black, and we want you know creature sacrifice. We want some powerful cards here. Shield the Whispering One is a very powerful card. Five up black, Swamp Walk. At the beginning of your upkeep, return target creature card from graveyard to battlefield. It's a little resurrection. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacks a creature. So this is insane uh, creature removal too. This can uh, complement our Tox Reel. We can have them both out. That'd be really nasty because you can just get your stuff back uh, there. So shield is really good. Then we have the ultimate finisher right here. You're making all your opponents sack creatures. You cast Rise of Dark Realms, put all the creatures onto the battlefield from all graveyards. 
So that is the finisher right there. And of course, you know, bring things back from Graveyard. We have Agony's Awakening with the Shieldred Dark Rise of Dark Realms, bring things back from Graveyard. We have a mobile double face card. It brings things back. It's very good, very useful. Play it as land most of the time, but still very, very good. Okay, on to our, the, I call it the staple or general section of the deck right here. Still has a little theme, but you know, the staples of EDH. We have our Demonic Tutor, Trinket Mage to find, right? Some card draw. So we have this tutor package right here, Skull Clamp, right here. And now, you know what? I totally forgot to put this as a tutor. I, I need to start putting this as part of the tutor package, Urza Saga, instead of land. Because we're basically using the land drop as a tutor. And the tutor is for Skull Clamp right here. Skull Clamp does what, you know, Toxroll does with slugs. You could clamp a slug, but you get to draw two cards and cost one less. And it's a colorless. So good card draw right there. Ayara, first of Lockloin. It's got two abilities, but the main part we want to do is sacrifice another black creature, draw a card. So this lets you sacrifice a slug um, without paying mana and draw a card. Right there, two. Then you have Yogmoth. Again, another sack outlet lets you draw cards and lets you put minus one, minus one counters. Uh, and the cool part is this actually really matters in this deck is black, black discard card proliferate. So you can proliferate those slime counters. So that is super cool. You have a, a cool card draw on Plum the Forbidden. If you want to just generate a bunch of death triggers, you could sacrifice those creatures, draw a card for each creature, lose a life. Of course, you have your classic Ristic Study. Why not? Now onto the removal section, we have Pongify. It's very, I, I'm starting to like, the more I play EDH, the more I like Pongify and Rapid Hybridization in most blue decks because they are very efficient, they're very cheap. And the cool part is actually make a creature on your opponent's side for Toxreal. So actually it's a double fan. It's really good in this deck because you want to give them creatures um, for the Toxreal ability to trigger. Cyclonic Rift, of course, always good. Feed the Swarm. This is the only way to get rid of enchantments. I guess you can bounce an enchantment and counter on the way back with Fierce Guardianship, but Feed the Swarm, good. We have Player Removal, Torment of Hailfire. I should put that right in the back there. Raven Form, kill an artifact. So artifact and enchantment destruction are premium in this deck because we are playing Demir deck, but we have cards that do one of each. So it's there just in case. Good removal. And then and this also makes a little bird on their side too. So again, on theme. Player removal again, Torment of Hellfire. I usually, sir, usually say it for last, but I don't know. I had the ordering wrong. And then you have Board Wipes, Toxic Deluge, which is really good. Then you have some utility cards. Dothy Voidwalker, good graveyard hate right there. And I like to include Dothy Voidwalker because, you know, it's just really good graveyard heart and hate. And then sometimes you get lucky, and then you get to steal something really powerful and cast it for free. Crypt Gas helps double your mana. Uh, there is Cabal Coffers in this deck that you want to fetch out again because you have very high mana value um, commander okay so there's the cards now we go to the ramp section we do want to ramp hard ramp a lot so we got burnished heart here and it's a creature that sacrifices itself more death triggers psalm simulacrum very good here we got expedition map this can find cabal coffers or orborg your Urza Saga can find Expedition Map, which can find the other half of the Cabal Coffers or Borg combo. Wait for us, Bobble. Moon Silver Key. I really like this from Midnight Hunt. Uh, two, two mana. I know it sucks. It's not one mana. You can't search out for Urza Saga. They probably did it on purpose. One tap. Sacrifice it. Search your library for an artifact card with a mana ability or basic land card. Reveal it and put it in your hand. Moon Silver Key can find Frexian Altar, which is a sack outlet because it is a mana ability. Moon Silver Key can also find Soul Ring, you know, so at worst, find Soul Ring, find Basic Land. Then you have your Arcane Signet, the Mirror Signet, Talisman of Dominance, Mind Stone, Thought Vessel, Everflowing Chalice. This is cool because you can scale it, you can pay four, and then it taps for two. Uh, and then you can proliferate with Yogmoth as well as a little benefit if that ever happens. Skyclave Relic, you can get, you know, uh, three relics for a cost of six mana. Then your land. We got the new Midnight Hunt Shipwreck Marsh. I really love it. The cool Watery Grave from uh, Secret Lair. Then the usual dual lands here. I usually don't include the Bounce Land, but again, oops. I include Bounce Land because of, you know, again, Tox Wheel, 7-7 seven, seven mana value. Same with Ancient Tomb. Then we have our Cabal Coffers Orbor Combo. That usually I try, I, I don't include Cabal Coffers that much unless I need a lot of mana. 
And in here, I do need a lot of mana, so I include the combo here. Then I have Bajuka Bog. So a lot, of, a lot of, this deck is very black heavy. So I include a lot of black utility cards here too. Bajuka Bog, Shizo, Death Storehouse. Our commander happens to have seven power toughness. And if we give it fear, we might be able to attack into a non-black player. And guess what? Three hits with Toxreal and they're dead because of a seven power commander. Always pay attention to commanders with seven power because that is a magic number to hit 21. Frexen Tower, good sack outlet. Castle Lockdwayne. Uh, way to draw cards. Carnage Bastion, right there. Proliferate, just like Yawgmoth. Westville Abbey, make some creatures. Uh, and then you can sack five creatures, transform. So you sack the extra slugs and turn it to, or to Ormondale, right here, the Profane Prince. Right, your Flying Lifelink, Indestructible Haste. So pretty neat. And then we have our Swamps and our Islands. All right, so that's Toxtro deck right here. Again, this is a grindy deck, which I like. Sometimes there's explosive decks, you know, that kind of like if you goldfish, you can goldfish on turn five or six. Toxro is definitely a very grindy deck, but once Toxro gets going, it starts exploding really fast, board wiping your opponent. Um, you're protecting Toxro with your protection spells, and it's, it does snowball if you can stay alive. The idea is you gotta just hold on, ramp, and hold on so you can land Toxro on the battlefield. All right, so I'm gonna continue shuffling this deck. If you enjoyed this video, give the video a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be alerted for new videos. And I have the deck list and TCG play affiliate link in the description below. So we're going to shuffle this deck up and then we'll be right back. All right, we are back. Turn one, our friend Toxril. Now, we're not trying to be toxic people while playing, you know. It's just our commander is called Toxril, you know, for toxic. So let's see what we got. All right. See here, remember this is a modal double face card, can be used as land, but we have a bunch of lands actually. Three lands, uh, Malachi Rebirth, Moonsilver Key, which can get us a land, mana ramp. So I think we're gonna use this to protect our commander when it comes out. This could be a Soul Ring, Skyclave Relic, um, Aeroflow and Chalice, a bunch of cool stuff, okay. So usually I play Watergrave Tap, but I think we got very strong play. If we just use our Angie Tomb for Moon Silver Key, we got a bunch of life gain in this deck, like Zupu Cutthroat. So let's do that. We'll do this, tap this, play uh, Moon Silver Key right away. I know it takes three to to crack, but again, it can get a Soul Ring, so it's really good. Turn two. Oh, you know, we, we totally forgot to draw for our first turn. It's too excited. That's our draw. Okay, more lands. No, no problem. Okay, now turn two. Now we will draw again for our second turn. I have been playing a little modern hammer time recently, and I'm just not, you know, commander, everybody gets to draw, but you know, in other constructive formats, if you're on the play, you do not get to draw. All right, let's see our plan. Our plan is to, so this doesn't produce colored mana unless you already have colored mana, so definitely not playing this. Probably play this. So we have, if we play this, we could crack this, get a soul ring. And then we use extra mana, play the soul ring. Um, crack this, get the mana, play soul ring, soul ring with this, have three mana. Tap this, crack this, get a soul ring. Somewhere here. Gives ourselves a soul ring because that helps us cast our commander faster. Where's that soul ring? Usually I'll just say, hey, I'm getting a soul ring and then not like get it to like somebody else's turn. So I really don't like wasting people's time searching for cards unless it's like I need it. I just announced what card it is. Everybody knows what a soul ring is. Tap the soul ring. Use extra mana from here, tap the soul ring. Tap this. Play a uh, slaughter specialist here. Actually, I would probably play Zul for Cutthroat because I don't want to give people creatures to do things with yet. And just burn the, the floating mana. All right, turn three here. So untap my things. We'll draw more ramp. Sweet. Some people might complain that I have a soul ring early, but you know what? I put this extra card in there to find it. I also put in the um, trinket mage to actually find the soul ring too. So, you know, I have ways to find soul ring. Now we can play our sunken ruin here for colored mana. What can we do? So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now if we accelerate Rayfer's bobble and play our watery grave next turn, we should have eight mana to hold up Malachi Rebirth and Toxeril. So let's do that. Sounds like a good idea. So let's just tap this for our Wayfarer's Bobble. 
we will tap this to crack sack this we'll get ourselves a nice island actually we have enough blue man we'll just get our swamp play tight we still have one floating mana here then we will use the one floating mana let's see we don't have any three drops to play do we Oop, I dropped something on the side here. I'll just play Species Specialist. Slaughter Specialist, not Species Specialist. And create um, white humans right here. So just three white humans under each opponent's control. So I'll just mark it like that right there. I'll continue shuffling my deck. I tap my swamp for that. And then I say, go. Turn four. So yes, we have done some additional ramping with Ancient Tomb and Soul Ring. Remember, we've tapped Ancient Tomb three times, so we've done, you know, done six damage ourselves, so we need to get gain life back again with Zulpu Cutthroat. Not turn six, turn four. Species Specialist is not bad. Okay, so let's counter our mana here. Four, five, six, seven. Then we have the Wari Grave, and we're just going to suck it up, shock it in to play untapped. Here, we're going to take another damage, two damage. Keep this wire grave uh, sitting there. We're gonna play seven, play Toxril. Of course, remember, your, your opponents know that it's coming. So you gotta kinda like, get ready. Somebody sword supplashers it, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna Malachi Rebirth, you lose even more life, right here. Now, uh, actually, you can't, so you can't Malachi Rebirth sword supplashers, cause it is when this uh, creature dies, sword supplashers exile, so let's say they, um, they uh they can't doom blade because it's black i was about to say doom blade see infernal grass that's the new uh two mana doom blade that they lose two life we would cast malachi rebirth so yes if they swords of plowshares you you kind of lose uh your torah your toxoro so i go we'll cast malachi rebirth it dies you lose two life comes back into play tapped and their turn put a slime counter on everything even these humans that's a large specialist uh created so what this will do is this will create Three slugs, put this human back in our token pile. Three slugs here. Then when a creature in opponent control dies, put plus one plus one counter, so more counters here. This isn't blood artist, but it, it won't trigger unless things you control die. You say pass the turn. Remember, when you pass the turn, end of your turn, everybody gets a slime counter. Then more slime, slime counters on turn player two, player three, player four. Then when it gets back to your turn, all the creatures have minus four, minus four at most. I mean, if player three plays a, a creature, then it has minus one, minus one. So just remember that and keep your triggers. But I'm gonna pretend that the board's empty for now, since we're just gold fishing. This is the worst case scenario. The best case scenario, you would have like seven slugs because a bunch of like seven, I'm talking about like 20 slugs since everybody's creatures died because they're playing a lot of creatures. But let's do the worst case scenario. We have three slugs. This has three plus one plus one counters. And we have an untapped Toxoril. Uh, our opponent, maybe the one that goes right after us, probably has no creatures because Toxoril probably killed them all. So turn five, we draw a card. I think this is turn six, actually. We draw a Thought Vessel. So now we have things to do. We can use Toxoril's ability, but we have Plum, Plum the Forbidden, which, you know, probably good. Now Species Specialist gets us cards too and Thought Vessel. So what we could do is tap this. Tap our soul ring to do a species specialist. Then we're gonna name slug because what we're going to do is tap, we'll just tap our ancient tomb. We'll gain life back into the for cutthroat. Now cast plum the forbidden. I guess we'll lose life here too. So okay, we'll we'll kind of net lose life. We're gonna cast this at additional cost to cast this spell. You may sacrifice one or more creatures. When you do copy a spell for each creature, sacrifice this way. So we're going to sacrifice all three slugs. So we're going to have four cards lose four life. Now remember, keep track of your life total. Okay, do that. Remember when, so this is on the stack. Uh, we have Species Specialist, so right? Slug, three slugs die, we draw three cards from the Species Specialist. That's a sweet three right there. Helps keeps our Toxoro alive right there. Then we draw four cards from Plum the Forbidden. One, two, three, four. All right, that is sweet. So we are we are doing it, and then Zulpo Cutthroat will trigger uh, three times. We do have a land drop to give, so we'll play a swamp right there. Move this out of the way, so we got all these cool things. Now, again, it goes around. Uh, you could protect 
Tox row, I mean, when I say it goes around, the turn order goes around again, put slug, slime counters on each end step. Don't forget that, it's very important. Right there, you have a bunch of cards ready to go for next turn. If you are confident two people don't have removal spells, you can play Exhibition Map. I wouldn't because I have not, I now have two card advantage engines or you know, Tox Real protection engines right here in my hand, so I will keep two mana up to protect Tox Real here. You know, I can always attack with my 7-7 seven, seven to somebody who doesn't have a creature. Remember, three Toxicroll attacks will kill him via commander damage. Here, Toxicroll will essentially... So essentially, what we've done is we've gone to a state of... You have to exile Toxicroll because I have two pieces of protection right here. Uh, if you play, play a creature, they have to be bigger than like a 5-5 five, five to ever get back to your, your round. Because Toxicroll will kill them. And now I'm just gaining value because a slug... I can sacrifice a slug via Toxicroll's ability. Draw two cards, one via Species Specialist, one via Toxicroll, gain some life. Every time a creature you control dies, it gets bigger. My Species Specialist, my Slaughter Specialist. I have two Specialists here, so I'm like very confused. We'll get bigger. So this is the board state we want to be in right here. And now we have Crypt Gas. We can make another Toxicroll to make extra Slugs. Or we make another Species Specialist to draw tons of more cards. Or we can just, you know, play our Crypt Gas and make another Crypt Gas with Sakashima to... Uh, Expedition map can find our half of Cabal Coffer. So we are uh, in the driver's seat. Uh, we, we've put our you know, maximum damage to our opponents. And this is how this deck works. Nice slow grind and just put the screws on and then win that way. Anyways, if you enjoy this deck tech, give the video a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be alerted for new videos in the future. I have my TCG player uh, deck list and affiliate link in the description below. And I also have Channel Fireball uh, affiliate link. You type in Vex MTG and that will help support the channel. So I hope you enjoy building this deck. I hope your opponents enjoy playing against this deck. And I hope everybody has a wonderful day.